Hello everyone. So today I'm going to discuss the differentials and management of gradual painless loss of vision, which are here. But before that, I'm going to give you a bit of a recap. So whenever a patient presents with loss of vision or defective vision, we are going to ask whether it is painful or painless. Then if the uh, loss of vision is painful, then it means that there are some conditions that is we should think of acute angle closure, glaucoma, endophthalmitis, and keratitis. And we should take history along that line. But if it is painless, then we should ask whether it was sudden or it was gradual over time. If it the, if the loss was uh, sudden and painless, it mostly means emergency conditions like central retinal artery occlusion, central retinal vein occlusion, and uh, stroke, that is cerebrovascular accident. So basically the C3, retinal detachment, and optic neuritis. Uh, as I have previously told you that uh, some of the cases of optic neuritis are painful as well. So optic neuritis, uh, for the purpose of remember, remem remembering it, you should think of it like 70% are uh, painless and 30% are painful. These are not the exact numbers, but I just told you just for you to uh, remember it. Okay. So gradual painless loss of vision, uh, it, it has about five important differentials. So we have cataract, age-related macular degeneration, diabetic retinopathy, hypertensive retinopathy, and open angle glaucoma. Okay, so in all these five conditions, the patient present with loss of vision, which is painless and it is gradual. Okay, so it is over a long period of time. How do we take history in patients with gradual painless loss of vision? So the first thing that we ask is which eye has been affected and what about the other eye? And then we ask Odipara and a kind of modified Odipara. So then we ask uh, since when it happened, was it sudden or gradual? Was it partial or complete? Okay. Was it in the center of the vision or in the periphery of the vision? Was it, uh, is it consistent or it comes and goes? And is there anything else associated with the vision loss? So is there any redness, uh, pain and discharge? Does light appear brighter to you? Okay. Uh, this is basically called glare where the normal light appear more bright and basically patient is photosensitive. sensitive. And it is a, a glare occur in uh, cataract, okay? So in cases of visual painless loss of vision, the glare is the characteristic of cataract. Do you bump into things? So, you know, bumping into things can be in two conditions. One is age-related macular degeneration where macula is affected and as macula is the center of the vision, so there is vision loss in the center and the patient uh, bump into people while walking like things in the center of the vision, okay? And um, in cases of open angle glaucoma, the vision loss starts from periphery, okay? So it starts from periphery and then it grows inward until the patient have a thing that we call as tunnel vision. So there is no vision in the periphery on all the sides, but there is vision in the center, okay? So in cases of glaucoma, the vision in the center is affected in the last, okay? So glaucoma patient will bump into things on their sides, okay? So maybe bumping into furniture, are bumping into car. All right. Um, okay, then we should ask, does the lines appear wavy to you or does the objects appear smaller than usual to you? Okay, so these two questions are basically for age-related macular degeneration. So these are basically the differential diagnosis question. And in cases of age-related macular degeneration, what happened is the straight line, like the, the line on this page, they appear wavy to the patient. And also the objects appear smaller than normal. Okay, uh, regarding past medical history, we should ask about any previous eye condition, um, any glasses used, any contact lenses, any eye surgeries, etc. And about other medical condition, do you have any medical condition like diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol level, etc. And you should also ask whether it is controlled or not, okay? All right, then we should ask about medications, allergies, family history of vision loss, family history of a similar condition, and then psychosocial. Psychosocial, again, very important here. Okay, so how what is the patient's job? How is he managing to do his job with his vision being affected? And as it is, gradual painless loss of vision. So the history is going to be chronic, like for the last two months or something. So how is he coping with that? Is he living alone or is he living with someone? If he's living alone, how is he able to manage his daily activities, okay? How is this affecting his mood? Because not able to see things properly, 
is you know it's a very it's a very huge thing it's impact life in every possible way so you should ask psychosocial here is really really important okay then the lifestyle question smoking alcohol diet and exercise then ideas concerns and expectation and in examination you will do the naked eye examination of the eye with a torch and then visual equity and visual field and color vision as well okay so in cases of cataract so cataract as you all know a typical patient of cataract will be an old patient because the most common cause of cataract is old age. So that is basically an old patient or it can be a patient who is taking uh, steroids. So for example, a patient with autoimmune condition, for example, polymyalgia rheumatica or rheumatoid arthritis who is taking steroids, uh, he can develop cataract as well. So long-term use of steroids or old age, so that will be a typical patient. What happened in cataract is they, they tell you that their vision has been uh, gradually uh, been worsening and it's kind of cloudy they are not able to see things properly because their vision is cloudy and uh, the light really appears blight the light really uh, bother them especially at night so this is a typical patient of cataract okay um, how you will explain this condition to the patient you will tell them that it seems like you have a condition called cataract and it affects the part of the eye, which is called lens. Usually the lens inside of our eye is very clear and it's transparent, but in this condition, it, become, it becomes cloudy, okay? Why this happen? This happened most commonly because of old age, or it can happen because of diabetes or long-term use of steroid, okay? So you should tell the patient that in your case, for example, if the patient is old, then you will tell him that in your case, it's most probably because of the age. All right, how we are going to manage this patient? So in GP, what we are going to do, we are going to do the routine blood tests and we are going to refer the patient to ophthalmologist and there will be routine referral, okay? We'll tell them what the ophthalmologist will do. Uh, the ophthalmologist will do further examination of the eye and they will also plan a surgery to replace the cloudy lens of the eye with a clear one, which is basically an artificial plastic lens and following the surgery, your vision will recover, okay? Uh, about the surgery, you should tell the patient that it's a day case surgery and uh, it's done under local anesthesia, which means they will put your eye to sleep. You will be awake, but they will put your eyes to sleep so that you won't feel any pain, okay? And uh, it takes about an hour and if both eyes are affected, for example, in old age, the cataract is there in both eyes. It can be more severe in one eye, but uh, it's there in both eyes, okay? Both eyes are affected to some degree, same in steroid use. So, you should tell them that uh, both eyes need uh, to be operated, but the operation on one eye will be first and the other one will be after 6 to 12 weeks, okay? Uh, so please don't forget about driving, all right? Uh, tell all these patients not to drive. So tell this patient not to drive un until you are treated by the specialist and are able to see clearly again because the cataract patient once um, the surgery is performed and the lens is replaced, they will be able to see clearly again. So you should tell them that avoid driving until such time. Okay, now age-related macular degeneration. Age-related macular degeneration is the name tell you the patient will be old because this is an age-related condition. And uh, the patient might have some family history. The patient might be smoking because these are the things that are linked with ARMD. Okay, and the patient will tell you that I have been experiencing gradual loss of vision. There is no pain. And uh, it's really affecting the center of my vision. I bump into people while, while I walk. And um, sometimes the lines appear wavy and uh, objects appear smaller than usual, okay? So how you are going to explain the condition to the patient? You will tell the patient that you have a condition that affects the central part of your vision and it is called as macular degeneration, okay? Macula is a part of the retina. At the back of our eye, which is responsible for sharp, clear central vision. And this condition affects the macula. That's why you are not able to see things in the center of your vision clearly. But why this happens, there is no known cause. Okay, nobody knows why this happens. But there has been links to high blood pressure, smoking, and family history. So whatever of these risk factors you are able to find out in the history, you should tell the patient that you have this risk factor. So maybe that's why you have been affected by this condition. Uh, what we are going to do for this patient, we'll inform our seniors and we will arrange a same-day referral to the ophthalmologist, okay? So it is a same-day referral, not a routine referral. What the ophthalmologist will do, they will do special scans of your eye, okay? We'll tell the patient that they will do special scan of your eye to visualize retina, which is a back layer of your eye. 
and uh, specific treatment basically depends upon the type of ARMD. So basically, there are two types of ARMD. One is dry ARMD and the other one is wet ARMD. Uh, dry ARMD patient tell you that the vision loss, like I described before, it is gradual, it is painless, and uh, it's been there for some time. Wet RMD, on the other hand, develops suddenly, okay? So it may be over like three to four days. So wet ARMD, in wet ARMD, we give anti-VGF injections in the eye and they probably reverse the condition, okay? They have a role in reversing the condition, anti-VGF injections in the eye. But dry ARMD is, uh, it's not treatable, okay? So for these patients, for dry ARMD, once the ophthalmologist confirm the diagnosis, they will refer them to the low vision aid clinic because there is nothing that we can do for these patients except helping them to make the use of uh, what's left of their vision, okay? So the low vision aid clinic people, what they will do, they will give them magnifying glasses, okay? They will give them special computer, uh, special uh, keyboards with uh, large letters, okay? And uh, they will do some modification inside the house as well for the patient to make the most use of whatever of their vision remains, okay? So that is basically the management of dry ARMD. But uh, ARMD, the ophthalmologist will uh, inject anti vegf injection in the eye and they will probably reverse the um, symptoms. Okay, driving, we should always uh, advise them to avoid driving and inform the VLA it is, as it is a progressive condition. Okay, so um, an examination, when you are doing examination on this patient, what you will verbalize is, um, ex I will examine your eye with torch and I will check um, your eye, your visual equity, your visual field, your eye movement, and then I will examine the beak of your eye with a special instrument, which is called fundoscope. This is what you will verbalize in your examination. And in examination findings, you, you might be told that they, you find drosen, okay? That there is a drusen. So drusen is this thing, the yellow deposits here, as you can see. The yellow deposits, these yellow dots all over the retina. These are basically drusens, and they are nothing but deposition of some fatty substances which are formed as a result of degeneration of macula. And these drusens can be found in dry age-related macular degeneration, so the dry form of ARMD. In wet form of ARMD, there are abnormal vessels uh, but not drusens, okay? So you might find drusens, and uh, so please keep this picture in your mind. Now, open angle glaucoma. We have already discussed angle closure glaucoma, which is an ophthalmic emergency, but open angle glaucoma, uh, these patients, they are not mostly av even aware of their condition. The angle closure glaucoma patient, which is an ophthalmic emergency, they come screaming to the ER, okay, because they are in severe pain and there is sudden loss or blurring of their vision and they have a severe headache and they are really, really sick, vomiting and screaming with pain. On the other hand, the open angle glaucoma patient, they are not even aware of their condition because this condition slowly, slowly destroy the vision and it starts from the periphery, okay? So from the periphery of the vision, it starts and the patient is slowly and gradually losing his visual field, but he's not aware, okay? So for example, he loses the vision on the side, so he will just turn his head more, okay? Without being aware that I'm losing my vision. It's it, it's not until in until the very late stage when it starts encroaching in the central vision that the patient notice, okay? So open angle glaucoma patient, they either present very, very late, when they you know realize on their own that okay my vision is affected now or sometime they can be you know detected on routine examination so for example the patient has myopia or the patient has hypermetropia or any other eye condition for which he is going to the ophthalmologist okay short sightedness long sightedness etc and the, and they are visiting their optometrist and um, during their routine examination they measure the intraocular pressure and they found out that it's high, okay? So the finding of open angle glaucoma is either in the very, very late stages by the patient itself or it is, in, um, you know, incidentally picked up by the optometrists. So the open angle glaucoma patient, it can he can come to the GP referred by the optometrist. Um, so how we are going to explain it to the patient? 
You will tell the patient that you have a condition called open angle glaucoma and in this condition the pressure in, their, uh, in your eye become a bit higher than the normal which cause some damage to the retina which is a part of the eye responsible for vision. Okay. So, um, why this, so patient might ask why this happens. So, we'll tell them that nobody knows the exact cause but it's related to old age, family history and diabetes mellitus. Okay. Uh, and also open ankle glaucoma is more common in African Caribbean people. So keep these, uh, you know, risk factors in mind in case the patient asks. Okay. Um, so what we are going to do with these patients? So if they present in GP, we will arrange a routine referral to the ophthalmologist. Okay. A routine referral to the ophthalmologist and the ophthalmologist and then for perform further, um, invest, uh, you know, examination. They will do gonioscopy. To look for the interior chamber angle, uh, interior chamber angle. Okay, they will do um, B scan of the eye. They will measure intraocular pressure. They will do fundoscopy and everything. Fundoscopy to look for uh, copying of the optic disc. Okay, so the ophthalmologist will do all of these, and then they will give they will give eye drops, and they will you know plan plan some uh, laser treatment or surgery or something. Okay, depending upon each individual case. So you should just tell the patient that we are going to refer you to the ophthalmologist. The referral should be routine, okay, not urgent. And you might and you also you should also explain to the patient what the ophthalmologist is going to do. So for the examination, and then they might plan, they might give you some eye drops and they, they might plan some uh, surgery for you or laser treatment for you. Okay. But the referral should be urgent, okay? Urgent referral to the ER if IOP is more than 35 millimeter of mercury. Or there are visual field defects. Okay, so IOP more than 35 millimeter of mercury or visual field defects is urgent referral. In that case, they will just go urgently and they will get eye drops to reduce the pressure in the eye. So eye drops basically pilocarpine, which reduce the pressure in the eye. And later, uh, for a specific treatment we plan for them, which could be laser treatment or surgical treatment of the eye. Um, also advise these patients to avoid driving and inform DB DBLA. Uh, and the ophthalmology station specially keep the rhyming and part in mind and also in the ENT where the patient is having vertigo, okay? Now, diabetic retinopathy, our last station. So, diabetic retinopathy, uh, as you all know, the diabetes, it affects the blood vessel in the uh, in the body and then it causes microvascular and macrovascular complication and diabetic retinopathy is one of the microvascular complication. And these patients present later in their diabetes, especially in the patient who have long-standing diabetes and not properly controlled, they develop diabetic retinopathy. Um, and uh, there are no other symptoms just apart from the gradual worsening of vision, okay? So how we are going to explain this to the patient? We'll tell the patient that it is a complication of long-standing diabetes. Diabetes causes damage to a small blood vessel at the back of uh, our eye, which is called retina. And this is called as diabetic retinopathy, which causes impaired vision okay what we are going to do for this patient we are going to inform our seniors we are going to do routine blood test and hv1c and um we should adjust the dose of whatever diabetic medication they are taking whether oral hypoglycemic or insulin we'll tell them that we will discuss with our senior to just adjust the dose for better uh, blood sugar control we will arrange a referral to the ophthalmologist routine referral to the ophthalmologist ophthalmologist will do special scan of the eye to uh, visualize the back of the retina and they might do either laser treatment and them or they might arrange some eye injections for you okay to stop the further worsening of vision uh, these patients you should also give lifestyle advice about quitting smoking eating healthy exercise everything that we tell the diabetic patient for good sugar control and please don't forget about advising about the driving okay so that was all about your gradual painless loss of vision and I will see you soon in the last uh, video in the ophthalmology series which is uh, ocular toxoplasmosis.